This is the all new BMW R1300GS. According to the spec sheet, it's lighter, faster, and more high tech than the previous R1250. But is it really that good? And are big expensive adventure bikes really that relevant in this day and age? Before we find out, make sure you like and subscribe and tell us in the comments below what you think of the R1300GS. Now, here's what we think. The GS nameplate needs no introduction. Since the original R80 GS dropped almost 45 years ago, BMW has been an undisputed leader in the dual sport adventure segment. Thanks partly to the Long Way Round series and the iconic Safari customer ride, the GS legacy has grown with each subsequent version inspiring generations of adventure hungry riders. The most recent entry was the R1250 which was an instant hit when it landed in 2019. But by the end of its life cycle the 1250 was beginning to feel a little outdated compared to its rivals from the likes of KTM, Ducati, Triumph and even Harley Davidson. Enter the R1300, this is the replacement for the outgoing 1250 and while there are some similarities, it's clear this is a very different beast. There's a new frame, new suspension, new bodywork and a new headlight just to name a few things. But the most obvious difference is how compact and lightweight this bike feels compared to the old model. On the spec sheet the new GS isn't actually that much smaller but it is lighter with BMW claiming up to a 12 kilo weight reduction. This is thanks in part to the new frame but also the more compact power plant with the gearbox now located underneath the engine. And that iconic boxer twin is still very much a boxer twin but like the rest of the bike it's also been completely redesigned. It's now 1300cc and power and torque have both been increased to 145 horsepower and 149 newton meters respectively. And according to BMW that makes it the most powerful boxer in the GS series. The boxer is also fitted once again with BMW shift cam while a 6 speed gearbox helps deliver power to the rear wheel via the card and shaft. Now I'm going to be honest I find BMW's pricing and list of variants extremely confusing so I'm not going to give you the full rundown. But what I will tell you is that this is the Trophy X version which has a slight off-road bias compared to other GS variants. And that means it comes with things like adventure tyres, spoked wheels, increased suspension travel, protection bars and rally style foot pegs just to name a few things. The Trophy X also comes with a tall rally style seat and a double silencer as standard adding to the rugged off-road look of the bike. And all told this version of the GS checks in at 33,690 before on-road costs. And if you're wondering why there's no GS adventure version yet, well at the time we made this video it still hadn't been announced but it's a safe bet to say that it's on its way. If there was one area where the previous GS was starting to feel a little bit outdated, it was in the tech department, and BMW has addressed that with the new 1300. It now comes with things like radar cruise control, blind spot detection, lane change warning, front collision warning, and adaptive ride height. Unfortunately, this particular variant doesn't have any of those features, but there is still a lot of other things to like. The dynamic ESA semi-active suspension has been improved for the 1300 and the Trophy X has five ride modes as standard. The 6.5 inch TFT display doesn't really offer any great improvements and there is still no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but it's a neat unit nonetheless. Elsewhere, the GS also features cornering ABS, cornering traction control, a quick shifter and plenty more. Now if you've done any Google research on this bike, you'll know that customers have reported a few little issues and there have been a couple of recalls around the globe. But none of that is entirely uncommon for a first generation model and the 1300 is still a very impressive package, on paper at least. Now let's saddle up and see how it goes out in the real world. Well, despite the long list of changes, this is still very much a GS. That Boxer Twin is a beautiful engine. And while it does feel a little bit more powerful than the previous R1250, it still has that signature GS character. And I absolutely love it. Thanks to the increases in horsepower and torque, the new GS is most definitely quicker with plenty of grunt available whenever you need it but the bike is still very manageable on-road and off-road. Perhaps the biggest improvement on the new GS is the suspension. The old 1250 was nothing to scoff at, but this new setup is unbelievably good, especially on the dirt where it gives you a lot of confidence and control, especially when the dirt gets a little bit loose. It's a really, really great setup. The 1300 handles very well on the tarmac too, much like its predecessor. 
but the reduction in weight enhances its agility even more. The new GS ticks a lot of comfort boxes too. The controls are well laid out, the menu system's easy to use, and the heated grips and seat are probably the best in the business. In fact, the heated grips got too hot at one point and I had to turn them off. I don't have too much to complain about with the new GS, but if I have to find one thing is that the quick shift is just a little bit clunky, especially in the lower gears. It's not terrible and it's certainly not a deal breaker, but it's not the smoothest unit, which is a little bit surprising for BMW. While not everyone will agree, the new GS does improve in many key areas. The R1250 was just beginning to lose touch with its rivals, but the 1300 brings the GS name right back into the conversation. It might not be as fast as the Multistrada V4 or as off-road capable as the KTM 1290 Super Adventure R, but it might just about be the best all-rounder on the market. Sure, it's big and expensive, but it's also capable, comfortable, and a hell of a lot of fun. And that makes me think that big bore adventure bikes still do have their place. And if anything, the R1300GS ensures that the GS nameplate will live on for a few more generations at least. And that's fine by me. I really hope you enjoy this video and make sure you like it and subscribe to the channel and let us know in the comments below what you think of the R1300GS. Has BMW hit a winner with this bike or do you prefer the old R1250? Let us know.